Hello, and welcome to our Energy Connect studio at the Global Energy Show 2023. I'm delighted to have sitting next to me, Joseph Sikala, Minister of Industry and Trade of the Czech Republic. Thank you so much for joining me. It's a privilege for me to be here in Alberta, joining such an important event uh, and uh, basically knowing that uh, this part of uh, North America will play a very important role in energy security in the future. Absolutely. And I want to just jump in there about energy security. You know, why is it now so important for Europe, but also globally? We used to live for a long period of time, probably since the last energy crisis from 17s, with a feeling that energy is something uh, we will always have uh, enough and for affordable prices. Uh, some of the people started to believe that this is something like a public good or a human right. And uh, then basically with the Russian war of aggression against U Ukraine, we understood uh, how we failed with basically evaluation of the risk to be dependent on, uh, I would say, countries uh, with a slightly different values. And um, the dependency of some of the European countries were ultimate, like in the case of Czech Republic. 100% nuclear fuel, 98% uh, gas, and more than 60% uh, of crude oil. And then basically uh, gas storage is rented uh, through Russian Gazprom, empty before the winter, the market manipulation uh, from Russia and skyrocketing energy prices as a result and also as a reason for decreasing competitiveness and maybe also for a social unrest. So therefore, the questions of energy security uh, for the future are extremely important because now we know that energy uh, enough energy for affordable prices is an issue and uh, we have to diversify much more in the future. We, were, we have to decentralize means to go more in the direction of uh, renewable energy, but mainly we have to carefully select our partners among reliable, sustainable, like-minded partners sharing the same values. Absolutely, Joseph. And yeah, we're in a new energy world now. Um, what should I look around? You know, you said diversification, nuclear energy in the context of energy security, but also decarbonization. Uh, we are, Czech Republic is a traditional nuclear country uh, with probably the highest public support for nuclear energy uh, among all European countries. So uh, we have more than 70% of the total population being convinced that the nuclear energy is the right way. And what we see is also a certain change, mind change uh, in some of the European countries. So basically the nuclear alliance we created together with some uh, uh, like-minded countries in Europe has already 15 countries, which is more than the uh, than the half of the numbers of European Union. And uh, I see the nuclear energy as a stable carbon-free source of energy, maybe for some of the countries, like uh, landlocked countries, without the access to the like uh, offshore wind, as the only way how to decarbonize and how to fulfill the net zero as of the 2050. That's very interesting. We're here in Canada. What is the Czech Republic and Canada doing around nuclear energy in terms of cooperation? So, of course, we are closely observing uh, very positive development uh, uh, in the area of small uh, modular reactors. Uh, I was having a meeting uh, with uh, Ontario Power Generation today, and um, uh, we are striving for a certain level of uh, strategic collaboration because uh, we count on the uh, SMRs uh, for the future very strongly. 
And as I said, we already have our existing know-how in the area of uh, 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 equipment for uh, nuclear power production. This is, this is basically one thing. And uh, Czech state-owned or majority state-owned energy company, uh, Czech already signed a memorandum of understanding and we want to uh, deepen the cooperation and to speed it up. This is one of the areas. The second area is uh, definitely Canada is uh, extremely rich on uranium and the nuclear, nuclear fuel is one of the issues we have to solve as well. So we have to replace pretty fast the dependency on the nuclear fuel uh, uh, coming from Russia. So we have enough on stock uh, for the time being. However, we do not want to purchase nothing, to be very honest. No, not oil, no gas and no uh, nu nuclear, nuclear uh, uh, fuel from Russia in the future. That's really interesting to hear. And um, I want to sort of go back to about you know, energy security, but the importance of the Canadian LNG market, um, how that could be for the EU. Well, uh, the infrastructure of the LNG terminals, the Canadian ones, is not uh, extremely favorable for uh, supplies to Europe. And we have to understand that uh, there is a, a major change happening on the European market for many reasons. The first one is the Russian gas, the dependency on Russian gas. The one third of, of supplies were coming from Russia, 155 BCM. And this is a big, uh, big volume uh, which is to be replaced. Europe is heavily investing in the new LNG terminals. Just in this year, there will be 70 BCM new regasification capacity built in Netherlands, uh, Germany, Poland. Uh, and uh, so Europe is switching from like a, a pipeline gas to LNG gas. And this is, a, I think, also a big opportunity for Canada uh, because meanwhile, uh, Russia as the number one supplier to Europe was replaced by US. So US is currently the number one supplier. Getting gas from Canada and uh, exporting gas to Europe. And for example, Algeria is already the number, number three supplier uh, to Europe, uh, supplying uh, LNG as well as uh, pipeline gas uh, um, uh, through uh, 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 below the, 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 the Mediterranean the, the, to, to Italy and to, to the rest of Europe. Yeah? So, yeah, absolutely interesting there, Joseph. And um, we're here at the Global Energy Show in Calgary. Um, how's the show gone for you? And what's the importance of a show like this? I think it is extremely important because the major, uh, I would say, stakeholders to speak up. I was carefully listening to, to the... Uh, newly appointed uh, Prime Minister of Alberta to, to Premier of Saskatchewan, uh, having slightly different view uh, as a federal government, basically when it comes to the future exploration, uh, there are ministers from other countries, they are representatives of the major companies, and we see a change in the wording it, 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 it is my fresh experience for the World Economic Forum in Davos, because now we are meanwhile saying oil and gas is not the issue. Issue is a CO2. So if we are able to tackle the CO2 issue, sim simply to collect it and to store it, or if we will use a, a gas as a, as a compensation mechanism uh, for balancing the grid and for like a cogeneration production of heat um, uh, and electricity, for example, in winter where the, the sun load is, is uh, not sufficient enough, this is basically the solution. And we can do it with uh, much uh, more efficient carbon low technologies as it was in the past. So I expect that, you know, uh, these are still not the commodities of the past, but definitely commodities of the present, but of the future as well. Really interesting, Joseph. I'd like to just thank you for coming down to the studio. Thank you very much. And once again, uh, it was great to be here. And I hope that basically the energy collaboration uh, between Europe and, and Canada will uh, uh, 
will increase to a completely different level. Let's look out for that. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks everyone for watching and I look forward to bringing you more studio interviews from the show floor in the coming days.